Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, RX Felon MD again. Uh, I don't typically commit felonies, but when I do, they're drug offenses. And I'm coming to you big as life, twice as ugly as always, from my personal recording studio. And today I want to talk about this cool article I found. It's, called, uh, it's about the cocaine e-cigarette. Um, I found it in Sage Journals. It's like a free access uh, online journal. It was originally published uh, about a year and a half ago, October 2021. It's out of Europe. Um, and it talks about one of my favorite subjects, which is cocaine. Um, specifically, it talks about uh, what they call, refer to as smokable cocaine forms, which, like in this country, is basically, uh, it's called cocaine base, but it's colloquially known as crack. Um, it has a lot of uh, negative connotations with it, but... Anyway, this article is about a cocaine e-cigarette. Um, the title is The Cocaine E-Cigarette, A Theoretical Concept of a Harm Reduction Device for Current Users of Smokable Cocaine Forms. And uh, I'm going to go through the first part of this and, and also talk about um, some of my experiences with uh, smokable cocaine forms. Most of my experiences came with uh, snortable cocaine forms. Um, like I've said before, I've, I've never injected um, drugs recreationally. The only time I've ever taken a drug by injection is uh, in, in like as a patient in a hospital, you know, if I was there for surgery or something. And that was pretty limited. But anyway, um, I have used uh, crack cocaine, uh, I don't know, probably really only like a half dozen times, uh, oddly enough. I used cocaine every day for um, close to two and a half years from late 2013 to early 2016. So, um, but, uh, and I think maybe a few times after that, but um, the times I smoked crack cocaine was, were very rare, but it, they were notable. It, it was, it was quite an experience, you know, uh, for anybody who's done it, it's, it's, it's powerful, you know, I mean, regular co snortable cocaine is pow powerful too, but, um, crack cocaine is, it's smokable cocaine, you know? So anyway, the cocaine e-cigarette is a theoretical concept of a harm reduction device for current users of smokable cocaine forms. I think I said that already, but, um, there are, uh, great regional differences, but smokable cocaine forms such as, uh, they're called crack, freebase, uh, Paco. I've seen a thing on, I mean, it's years ago now, but like in, from South America that these, um, street kids basically were smoking this stuff called Paco. And it was basically like, it, it sounded like a very dirty form of, um, cocaine. I, I, and it says in this article that it's like some sort of cocaine paste. So, but apparently it was like full of solvents and like gasoline and it's just it, it was not a very pure uh or healthy thing to do so i mean not that cocaine is particularly healthy but you know the impurities and stuff like that can make it a lot more dangerous so and th this article does talk about that um these smokable cocaine forms are a drug complex associated with often harmful and problematic use patterns um, while strategies based on drug prohibition did not eradicate the consumption of smokable cocaine forms, prohibition itself led to many harmful effects, such as criminalization, stigmatization, unpredictable cocaine uh, forms quality, and hardly any safer use education. And those are just things that are generally an unfortunate reality in, in the war on drugs and prohibition. Um, as we know, but, uh, this article goes on to contrast the, uh, some of the harm reduction things that have been done with, uh, opioid use disorder, like, uh, you know, methadone or suboxone or, uh, even heroin use, uh, or heroin, um, like medical heroin basically, um, versus cocaine, which really doesn't have as many options. And this smokable, uh, cocaine e-cig is like a, it's a proposed option. It's not something that's like, it's theoretical at this point, but, and this article goes on to talk about that. Um, so 
It says, there are many positive insights from heroin assisted treatment programs with regard to heroin users. There are no comparable programs for problematic users of smokable cocaine. Smokable cocaine forms are challenging due to their different pharmacology and particularly their short duration, often leading to many administrations per day. So, I mean, that's, that's just the rule with cocaine in general. Uh, if you get it and you start using it, it's very likely that you'll use it many, many times throughout the day. Um, so these people, uh, and I forgot to mention it, it might not matter, but it's by this the articles by this guy named Fabian P. Steinmetz and Heino Stover. Uh, these guys are out of, um, one of them said, it said he's a professor in the Netherlands, like in Amsterdam. And the other one, I think, is a, a, a German guy. So, I mean, this is this is not an American article. I presume it's been translated, but anyway, it's pretty good. Um, so, the device is a cocaine e-cigarette, which could be prescribed to problematic users of smokable cocaine to reduce the risk of lung damage, to exclude potentially harmful adulterants, such as like fentanyl nowadays or, and, and other stuff. Um, the article doesn't explicitly say that, but I'm saying that, um, it can also limit the intake by formulation or technical settings. And I'll, I'll get into that probably in the next video. They, uh, I'm going to make this, I think into two videos cause it's kind of a sort of a long article, but they, they go through and talk about like how this e-cig would be made and that it would have like a timer on it and certain doses and stuff to make it like at least regulated and fairly, you know, relatively safe, safer than buying the stuff on the street, of course. Um, uh, and also the point would be to bring users of smokable cocaine forms into the medical system to address comorbidities and risk factors like, uh, you know, cardiovascular conditions, you know, heart and circulatory problems, um, insomnia, depression, etc. And it describes the basic functionality and general specifications of such a device um, that would be treating people with cocaine use disorder when cessation and substitution are not considered an option. It also talks about the possibility of substituting something like pharmaceutical amphetamine, methylphenidate um, as, as an option. We, we don't really have that here. Um, that would be quite frowned upon and would probably bring the attention of the DEA if doctors started prescribing, you know, speed or, uh, for, when I say speed, I mean like pharmaceutical stimulants, like Adderall, Ritalin, you know, anything like that to, to cocaine users. Um, even though I, I think that could be a very viable harm reduction thing. Um, but we're definitely not there yet. So Anyway, um, the, the article gives a little bit of background on um, cocaine. Um, I know I've talked about cocaine before in previous videos, but basically just talking about my use of it. Um, I haven't done cocaine. I haven't seen it, used it in almost six years. And uh, But like I said, prior to that, I had, I went through like two and a half years of daily use. So take that for what it's worth, I guess. Um, but anyway, cocaine is an alkaloid from the coca plant. Uh, the coca plant is called eroth erythroxylum coca is like the scientific name for the plant. And it basically grows in, um, places like Peru, Bolivia, uh, Colombia, like that. I think it grows in like a little bit higher elevations and there's a certain climate like a certain climate and temperature range is ideal for growing cocaine. And they, I mean, it's well known to grow, uh, in those countries in South America, at least, I think it may grow other places too, but it's not something that you would see growing wild here, um, in the United States, for example. So, but anyway, it comes from a plant. Um, cocaine is extracted like the, basically the plant you, you can, you can go on and see like on YouTube or wherever about people that, that process cocaine illegally because it's like pretty much with few exceptions, mo the vast majority of the use of it is Ill illegal. 
the use and distribution of it and the production of it. So it's all done like under the radar pretty much, but they basically crush up all the, they, they harvest all these coca plants and get the leaves and then like basically squash up all the leaves and then use solvents and processing to extract the cocaine in like a few steps is basically what it is. And then they turn it into coca paste and then they process that and, you know, purify cocaine from it. And, uh, that's how most of the cocaine gets, you know, it gets processed and it gets transported and imported and goes through the network of dealers and whatever and comes to the user, you know? So, Anyway, um, it has typical stimulant properties and is known for its status as a drug of abuse. That's quote unquote drug of abuse. So, um, it says it's banned in most legislations worldwide, but despite the ban, 2.9 million young adults ages 15 to 34 have used cocaine within the last year in Europe. And worldwide, there is an estimation from... 2014 of over 18 million persons ages 16 to 64 having used cocaine within one year. So there's a lot of cocaine use that goes on. Um, and it's typically, typically you can either get cocaine powder or uh, freebase like crack cocaine and you, you can either uh, snort it, which is mostly what I did or you can smoke it if it's in like the smokable form. And that's what this, this article is talking about. But overall, there are plenty of different cocaine products that are out there, such as coca tea. And I think I'm going to talk about this. Uh, there's this place in British Columbia, Canada, that's like a, a coca, I forget what it's called. It's like they serve coca tea there. And I think they also serve like um, mushroom, magic mushrooms and it said peyote and stuff like that. It was really wild. Uh, but anyway, there, there's that, like, that's the natural thing. They basically make, uh, turn like coca leaves into a tea and then you get just, I've never had it, but I mean, I guess you could just drink it and get like a mild cocaine effect, which is probably pretty safe. I mean, the indigenous people in South America have also been known to chew coca leaves, just put leaves in their mouth and put a little bit of like lime, I think to adjust the pH and then they just chew on it for a while and kind of like chewing tobacco. And that, that would be the safest way to do it. I think when you get into like extracting pure cocaine, it's a, you know, it's a lot stronger. It's probably a much different experience. So, uh, it also says there's cocaine free base and coca paste and powder. So, and then the, um, the thing is, the reason why you have to use cocaine base to to smoke cocaine effectively is because if you just have the cocaine hydrochloride powder, that is a lot more sensitive to heat. So if you heat it up, you'll basically degrade most of the cocaine and it's not really worth do, doing it that way. So they convert it to the free base and then it's like a lot more heat stable and you can just smoke it. So, so yeah, and it says... Uh, a typical consumption route is conducted with small pieces of glassware or metal pipes, commonly referred to as a crack pipe. And so that's where I was going to talk about my more limited experience with, uh, I'll just call it crack cocaine. It's, it's, I think of it as cocaine base, but it's, it's called crack. So I guess I'll call it that. Um, the times I did it, what we would do is we would get this little, like get a glass tube, this place in Huntington sold them. And, uh, it's basically just like a short glass tube. Uh, I think they called it a glass rose or something like that, but it was this thing that was sold as like a, a decorative thing, but it was really just people would buy it to make crack pipes out of it. And then you'd get this stuff called chore boy, which is like a, a metal scrubber thing. And you basically like get the pipe and then you stick the chore boy in it. And then you leave some space at the end of the pipe Well, at, at both ends. You have like the smoking end and then the uh, the end that you, the other end, you load it and you load some, um, crack cocaine onto the, into the end of the pipe and you start to heat it up, you get it to melt in there. And then you just like turn the pipe around. And I don't, I don't have a pipe here to demonstrate, of course, but it's, you, it takes a little technique, but you hold the lighter under the end of the pipe and, you know, 
and then you get this big hit of cocaine. And, you know, if you've ever snorted cocaine, it has a really distinctive taste and smell. And, you know, I'm not afraid to admit it. Like, I really used to enjoy doing cocaine. I mean, it, it was definitely a dumb thing to do because it's illegal and it's sort of, it's kind of hard on the body and mind, honestly. But it's very euphoric and, uh, you know, it, it was fun. I mean, it, it, it wasn't all fun. I mean, it wasn't fun the next day after or when it wore off and has a lot of negative side effects and stuff. I don't want to get into all that, but it's a very euphoric experience. To me, it was about the most euphoric drug I've ever done. But I did it so much that it kind of started to lose its magic. So I can totally see how people get into really super crippling cocaine addictions, especially with the smokable forms, because that's just like an immediate, I mean, snorting it's quick too, but I mean, when you smoke crack cocaine, it's like you went from nothing to all of a sudden you're just like, after a few puffs of that, man, you're just like, you can barely stand up and get this thing called a bell ringer, which is like your bell ringer, like your head, it rings, you get this like loud ringing sound in your ear. And it's just like this supreme, like quick euphoria. And it's really, I mean, you don't really get that with snorting the powder. I've, I've heard, I've never done it, but I've heard you get an even stronger like bell ringer and euphoric effect when you inject cocaine. But I never got to that point, fortunately. Um, but anyway, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Um, I can't recommend it, but I mean, like I said, I've, I've done it quite a bit. So there's that. And, and this article reflects that saying consumption of a smokable cocaine form leads to an intense stimulation with euphoria and a boost in self-confidence. The rather short duration of these mostly positively perceived effects is probably a main reason for its potential for individuals to develop a substance use disorder. Many problematic users consume multiple doses in a short period of time and uses may exceed, may exceed 13 use occasions per day. I mean, that's a conservative estimate. I mean, when I was snorting powder, like, I mean, I was doing more than 13 lines a day, I'd say. So I would do it all, all day pretty much and usually half the night or more. So yeah, it was, it was really easy to get into problematic patterns of use, especially at the time I had money that I could, you know, at least for the time being, I could afford to do that because it was pretty expensive, you know, but, um, as far as this article goes, they say this is in contrast to heroin use where a regulated administration can be realized with two or three administrations per day. So you don't have to do heroin or like opioids or comparable opioids nearly as often. And that's what they're saying is it can be particularly hard to treat you know, cocaine use disorder, because it's such a, such a Moorish thing, you just want to do it more and more, and you end up doing it so many times a day. Um, so they're basically proposing this um, cocaine e-cig that you can have like a controlled dose, take a puff out of like, I don't know if it would look like this, it would probably be sealed and have like, you know, tamper resistant stuff. But I'll get into that later. I they talk about that a little bit. But you just take your puff and then it times out and then like later you can do more, I guess, is, is the basic point of it. So, yeah, the aim of the study is to conceptualize a cocaine e-cigarette, which could become available via prescription to problematic smokable cocaine users unwilling to quit or unwilling to take a less harmful stimulant substitution such as methylphenidate or amphetamine. Um, the launch of such a medical device may trigger many positive effects. It is an alternative to potentially more harmful black market products. It may reduce drug-related crime. Um, and it may lead to more users accessing the healthcare system earlier and reduce harm by avoiding further lung damage. And the built-in setting and formulation would be likely to reduce overdoses. So um, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I'm going to do a part two uh, to talk more about this and get more into the article and I guess maybe give a little more background from my use. Um, I don't know. I just have my experiences here and I, I thought this article was interesting. So um, if you've gotten this far in the video, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, part two, stay tuned for part two. Uh, I'll be 
recording that soon. And hit the like button if you like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks, take care. RX Felon MD out for now. Peace.